How are you? It's been entertained. All right. <laughs> yeah, here's the, here the just-in-time inventory. Yes, I am. <laughs> Never early, but he's always on time. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The hour is 7 o'clock, and as mayor, I hereby <laughs> call to order the meeting of Laconia City Council scheduled for October 13, 2015. As always, we'll start our meeting with a salute to our American flag. Please rise and join Councilor David Bounds in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> I'll note for the record that the minutes to tonight's meeting are being kept by Deputy City Clerk Stacy Anders, and I would ask that she please call the roll. Councilman Boyle? Here. Councilman Boyle? Here. Here. Present? Present. Present. Here. I better go with here tonight. <laughs> okay, let the record show that all six counselors are present tonight and a quorum is established. And uh, we'll also note for the record that the council is joined at the front table tonight <coughs> by the city manager, Scott Meyer, and uh, city finance officer, Donna Woodeman. Our first order of regular business is to accept minutes of previous meetings. I'll remind the counselors that we have changed our format for doing so in recent weeks. And our last meeting was on September 28th. The minutes of that meeting were distributed to the council on October 5th. No corrections were received uh, at the city clerk's office. And so according to our new procedure, uh, without objection, I will declare that those minutes have been accepted. Next up is the consent and action calendar. Uh, for our audience's sake, this is a place on the calendar where we typically address items that have been approved at previous times uh, by the City Council. And the, we have one item on that agenda tonight, and that is a request from the Weir's Action Committee to use Endicott Park uh, at Weir's Beach, the parking lot there, to park motorcycles from June 11th through June 19th, 2016, which would be the annual motorcycle rally from 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. attached. Or, I'm sorry, there's a, and we have a memorandum attached to that request here, which was a letter from Mr. Driscoll. I believe Mr. Driscoll is here this evening. Yes, Joe, I can't, I can't remember the numbers, fourth. Joe, Joseph Driscoll the fourth. I see Mr. Driscoll the third is also here tonight, so we <coughs> keep our numbers straight. Uh, anyway, uh, Joseph Driscoll the third fourth is president of the Weir's Action Committee, I believe, and so he's here tonight to answer any questions. And what you have in your packet here tonight is a letter and another attachment, a couple of other attachments, including a profit and loss statement that that. Uh, attempts to uh, indicate where, how much money the Weir's Action Committee takes in, not only from Motorcycle Week parking, but from other sources as well, and where, where typically they spend their money. I believe the financial statement that they forwarded covers two years, two Motorcycle Weeks, not one, 2014 and 2015. So the income indicated on there uh, parking income of $53,000 would include, if I'm reading this correctly, two motorcycle rallies. So a little over $25,000 per rally is what has come in from that. So before we get any uh, motions on the floor, we have representatives of the Weir's Action Committee here tonight. As I said, um, we... Uh, I'm anticipating we're going to have some discussion on this issue tonight, so I would open the floor to comments and, and questions before we get a motion on the floor. Anyone? You're doing it from the floor or from the council? I'm sorry? You're asking for the floor for the audience or for the council? For the council. Okay. No, this is not a public hearing. 
I said we have some resources here to draw on that could answer questions if we have them. Okay. Councilor Bear. <coughs> First, I am not opposed to the city giving nonprofit organizations the chance to use city facilities such as the parking lots at the Weirs in order for them to raise funds for their projects. I have three reasons for opposing the Weir's Action Committee at this time. First, they have been given this valuable opportunity for years and years and have made much money for their causes, all very good causes. But there are many other nonprofit organizations in the city who would love to have the same opportunity. For example, the old mill, which needs yearly sustaining funds to stay open. The Boys and Girls Club, New Beginnings, our food pantries, the Salvation Army, and on and on. I believe the city should make the property available to different nonprofit profits each year, or perhaps charge a vendor fee for the opportunity of raising huge sums of money. Don't forget, the very members of the Action Committee are actually benefiting because the event is held in their area where all the money is spent by the motorcyclists. Secondly, while I mistakenly brought this up with the Weir's Park Association at the last meeting, it should be noted that this means two of the Weir's committees get all of the city lots. The third point is that this organization, which has been a member of the Motorcycle Association, withdrew its support rather than pay the $5,000 membership dues, which supports the work of the association. This from the association that benefits more than any from the event being held. The city supports their efforts and does much for the Weirs as well. Is it too much to ask that they support the event from which they benefit? This is an event for the whole city of Laconia and the Lakes region, and everyone should be involved and everyone should benefit. Anyone else? I have a couple of questions, if I could. Um, I'm looking at the profit and loss um, uh, from January of 2014 to September 21st of 2015. <coughs> and the parking income, am I right, is that mostly from a motorcycle week and you using these lots uh, with our permission? Is that, am I correct on that? Is there any parking income from any other source from uh, that lot? No, the, that is from the lot that uh, is down at Endicott Park there. Okay. Over the course of two years, as the mayor said. And are, are you folks adamant in terms of your position with uh, uh, the Laconia um, motorcycle folks? I guess I respond to that with a question that we're here to address an application that was approved by the Parks and Rec Association and it was never part of our application or part of any condition whatsoever that we be a part of that other organization. It's we have we have our reasons for doing that. We're capable of addressing those with the council at this time. I can address some of it. Our uh, former liaison that was at all those meetings and served as vice president for a time we will also address those concerns if the council wants to I think it's part of around. the discussion and part of the relevancy and part of the council's consideration in terms of this particular position with respect to the Laconia Motorcycle uh, uh, Association. Well, I guess to then answer that, I, I kind of have to, I would like to give a little bit of background on the organization and the fundraising efforts that have gone on now just to make sure that there isn't any misconception as to what we are uh, in terms of this. Um, we're a nonprofit organization in good standing with the state of New Hampshire. We're also a 501c4 organization uh, federally. 
So what that is, is that's a civic league or organization not organized for profit, but operating exclusively for the promotion of social welfare. That ties directly into our uh, mission statement, um, which deals with having, enhancing the uh, beauty and uh, natural resources we have for our residents and for people coming to the community in order to improve the quality of life for everyone. Now, what, uh, why that's relevant for your question is that's the lens that we have to put on any decision we make as an organization. And as an organization, as, as has been pointed out, roughly $25,000 of our, uh, of is, is income per year. You've been given about a 20 month uh, profit and loss statement. Um, roughly then, and I, th I think I did it with the specific numbers, you're talking about an investment of 18% of our entire income for a year to go towards dues to another organization. Um, it is not giving back to the community. It is not enhancing that natural resources that, that is part of our mission statement. It is, it is to have a seat on that board. Our history with that board uh, is much shorter than our history with the parking lot. Uh, well, the organization started in 96. The parking lot, this would be a 21st, uh, this is their 21st application, I guess you could say. And I think about maybe a decade ago was when we were asked by uh, the Motorcycle Week Association in or to, to join. Uh, we did. At the time, the dues were reduced at that juncture. Uh, since then, we've been paying an increased amount. Recently, as you all know, they've had a restructuring and efforts in order to recoup some money, which, and the dues have, were then increased to a level that as, as, a, as a committee, uh, we sat, we discussed, uh, the executive director of that organization is a member of our organization. He uh, discussed the concerns that everyone had, both uh, financially, uh, you know, as direction of the event, um, and was not able to answer certain concerns that the community, that our community group had. Again, we're talking about 18 to 20 percent of what we raised per what year. What concerns weren't they able to answer? Um, again, if we'd like to go into that, uh, it's financial. Um, they are in a very bad financial situation. There are, and we haven't seen any statements from them since we've moved off of of that board, so I don't know if that has greatly improved or not. Uh, I would like, in terms of that, it to be noted that our vote came with the caveat that if these issues were reconciled, we would absolutely entertain rejoining. Um, nobody has come to us saying that they have been, so uh, that's why I'm operating under that, pres that presumption. Uh, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt. We're talking very large sums of money that our group could never touch in a 20-year span uh, of debt that's hanging out there, and uh, there wasn't a plan to address that. Um, that is a very real concern for us. We are a 501c4 organization. We are a nonprofit. We, you know, we are a small community group that's just trying to make the money that we have go as far as it can for the community it serves. You know the the descriptions that I've seen that somehow, um, you know, I, I find it a bit of a mis misnomer to say that we are uh, the beneficiaries of everything we do. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, most groups that come before you with fundraising and nonprofits, w what the benefit is is that we're giving back to the community that is so greatly impacted by this event. It just is. It takes a city of 15, 16,000 people and raises it to hundreds of thousands of people, which has a significant impact on our residents and businesses. And what this has been able to do is help, help give back to that area, help beautify that area. I mean, as you've seen, I've, I've given a, a rundown of all the projects that we've done. Uh, most recently, uh, we, instead of having those white and metal 50 gallon trash barrels that look awful up and down Lakeside Avenue and the boardwalk. We came to the city and said, hey, can we start a project that changes that to recycling and trash receptacles that look very nice for the area? We worked with the city. We devoted $7,000 this year to that. Uh, I've been in contact with Parks and Rec at this point to complete that project, which at $7,000 before probably would take up what uh, what's left over on that profit and loss sheet. So. 
uh, you know, a, a kind of a long answer to your question, but I, I understand how you think that these things are linked, but I don't want anybody to think we're some sort of uh, chamber of commerce or business league or something like that. We are a community group dedicated to the area and its resources and its attributes that make it so unique in our community and keeping that to the level that, that, we, that we would like to. I mean, we, year in and year out, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars that we're devoting towards improving and maintaining public property. There's nothing that's going on that's ours. We're the Weir's Beach sign. It is a mascot for many things. It's on the logo for the master plan thing right now. It, it, it is the symbol of that area, and we are the ones who maintain it. We, anecdotally, we have purchased like the last two motors in the United States that can run a sign like that because it's, we've cherished the historic significance of it. It's not digital, it's those old motor systems. We've, we insure that property, we've made the statue, you know, we, we've done all these things that yes, directly impact our area, but that's, that's our organization, that's our mission. Um, so I, I believe Councillor Litton has a question. So <clears throat> I'm just, in, first of all, um, understand what you're saying in terms of your community. Um, that's not benefiting your organization. It's to the benefit of that, and you're to be commended for trying to make what you're doing, um, make that area more attractive, which benefits the whole city and, and everyone else that gets to use it. It's, it's an economic st stimulus to the area. I, I do, th though, think there is a connection here that, um, you know, we were briefed, I think, during the budget process that um, the outlook for us on Motorcycle Week, you know, we, I think, almost 10 years ago created a dedicated fund related to Motorcycle Week, and our forecast for next year is not to be able to run that in, in the black based on um, some expense trends. Um, and so I guess sort of like this tragedy of the commons kind of concept that I see here is that, yes, as a 501c4, you know, you, you're you should be taking what you're collecting in charitable, um, I mean, in your fundraising and using it to do things. On the other hand, um, if everybody sort of pulls out from promoting the event or a large percentage of those who benefit from the, the event. I mean, I think your fundraising is successful because people come to the event. I mm -hmm. think we're all taking a risk here in terms of how we're approaching this motorcycle week association situation and the promotion of the event that um, and I think the mayor spoke pretty elegantly on eloquently on this a number of meetings ago that you know we don't want to end up being like another community that you know end up you know taking down their own event and um, so um, I, I respect all those concerns but I I, I caution and am a little it's taken me a moment to think this one through, but you know, in the same breath, we're referring to our $5,000 board membership on the Laconia Motorcycle Week Association as a willingness to support and foster the event. And I find that, frankly, a little troubling, and in nothing, I'm not saying anything regarding the organization, but I would absolutely hope and our membership, for one, thousands of dollars by private organizations, uh, community or bigger organizations that are dedicated to this, go towards trying to enhance that event. I, I don't. I, I guess I'm. I'm just absolutely cautioning on on the approach that a direct monetary contribution, which seems to be what we're talking about here, towards that organization of five thousand dollars is somehow the be-all and end-all for how our organization can support, foster, and nurture that event. And I would disagree with that. I don't think that's the appropriate way to look at it at all. I think everybody, uh, City of Laconia, City of Meredith, uh, you, you know, variety of organizations, businesses in the Lakes region need to be operating outside that, that framework in order to enhance the event. Let me not cite a specific number. 5,000 was the number you threw out, but I'm, the principle here is that the city is ultimately responsible for the cost of the events. We have it in a dedicated fund. 
we have a forecast that says that we're going to potentially be in a loss situation, have to draw down on our reserves. Um, we're giving up um, a piece of city property, which all the taxpayers contribute towards, that could raise funds to help us offset that that cost. I think what you're doing is a good thing. I guess we're asking, I think, or, you know, Council Bear's raising, I think, uh, and maybe she's not saying it this way, but I guess we're asking is we'd like you to, to pitch in to the promoting the event that draws the people to come here um, if you're going to use the city property, which otherwise we could use maybe, you know, to, to help support the event that we're ultimately going to, you know, we took the position that we're not going to ask the taxpayers to subsidize Motorcycle Week, and, you know, bit by bit, we're getting closer to that position. Well, and again, I respond to that with my same concern. I, you are not asking us, and, and I, I did not come here really ready to deal with this particular issue. Again, this is outside of our application that we've put forward that's been cleared through Parks and Rec in this year. But you're not asking us to say, set aside $5,000 in an account that is then devoted to uh, enhancing the area, marketing the event, contributing to the event to, for the betterment of it. Is there any percentage that you think is worthwhile? Well, now I'm at very this point, At this point, we're not asking you to do anything. We're just having a discussion. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just asked what percentage we no, would I be willing say, to I give. didn't ask you to do it. I asked is there any percentage that well, you Well, again, I, I come back to the concerns that we had that have not been alleviated. And, uh -huh. and I want to, I, I'm trying not, to, with full respect to the council here, there was a meeting that occurred with that organization where these concerns were vetted. And I understand certain things, decisions were made, things were said at that time. If we want to get into that, we can. And you know, I'm in a position that I'm trying to be as respect respectful of the process as I can be, but we're bordering on asking me something okay, well, that, that Let me take it in a slightly different direction to your point, but first I want to recognize uh, Councilor Doyle. Well, I've got a few things, and I'm very familiar with this, this whole parking lot. I worked it for a number of years. Some things I would like to mention, number one, is that any, any organization can get this lot. Anybody can apply to use it. Anybody can apply to use any parking lot in the city. Nobody else has. Nobody else has because Sorry. if I had to. Excuse you for just a second. Sorry. Councilor I have Bear a point, wants to point order a point order. of order. Uh, Councilor Doyle, are you not a member of the Action Committee? I am. Then I believe you should recuse yourself. We're not voting. No, but you're discussing. So can I go out there and talk? I've seen Henry <laughs> recuse himself from any subject regarding the hospital. That's fine. I'll be happy. I was also told by the, let's see, what was it? The head of the Motorcycle Week Association said that he had confidence in any one of these members that we could be independent and, and vote honestly and not have to recuse ourselves from this type of a situation. Which way do you want it? The very Motorcycle Week According Association to the city, ahead of it the said. city law, if you read your manual. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to bring up my point. As a citizen, can I do that? Yes. So are you, are you uh, I'll let's be, clarify, are you recusing yourself um, from this I think, issue? I mean, no, quite honestly, if I'm not mistaken, I think every one of the counselors is an ad hoc member of this committee. We have extended that to any, any counselor. No. I thought we were. I am not a member. When I was a city councilor, I was also president of the Risk Action Committee, and that was permitted. Please, if you're going to speak, come to a microphone and address the, so we can get it on the record. Judy Kuhulik, 76 Lakeside. When I was a councilor, it was cleared through the mayor's office and the city attorney's office that even though I was now the city councilor, I could remain as the WAC president. Um, the only thing, um, one issue came up that I was going to be asked to recu be recused on the vendor's fees. And I explained to them that I'm all in favor of raising the vendor fees. That has no reflection on my personal property. So that was never raised again. So I'm just, I'm just saying she's allowed to do a discussion um, at the table. You're not voting on anything. And she's voting on an application. But even though she's a member, there's n it's, not, it's not a conflict. 
but it, it should be glad to recuse herself. That's not, not a problem. But I voted on things for WAC that, like the parking lot, when I was a counselor, just to clarify the record. In fact, you were the one that required, you were the one that required, that brought up the, that these applications had to come to council for approval. Well, I, that I, they never had to. Right. The, the financials. The finan okay. We never asked for the financials. Okay. Um, at that time, we were um, uh, what you called ad hoc of the city. Yeah. Yep. Um, but because there was a conflict with the city and WAC doing that, because technically the money should have passed through City Hall and then back to, the WAC, to WAC, we decided that we'd do a full forensic audit and then we applied for a 501c4. We didn't get the three because we were the caretaker of the fireworks. Okay. Does that Councilor clear Doyle, I would that the count, it's at my the own feeling is that this is up to you. Well, I certainly don't want to taint it, but I also feel that um, I'll be happy to recuse for the vote, but I really feel like I can either speak here or I can speak there. But there are some things that I think that need to be said. Is anybody uncomfortable other than Councilor? Ben She's Ben's also a resident of the Weirs. With her remaining at her seat to discuss it and, on the, and, you're, and you're not going to vote. Is that not what if I'm I, hearing? If that's an issue. Okay. Are we setting a precedent of allowing people of you know who belong to an association and sits on the council to engage in the discourse and to vote i know henry gets up every time the hospital issues comes up and sits in the audience and he doesn't contribute yeah he has a pecuniary it's, interest in that relationship it, i'm not paid by whack i fact, i pay to be a member <laughs> it costs me money well it has nothing that's not the point I think it's up to you, but I I, I, I would like there's a few things I would like to speak that uh, I just if, would like so to if, say, if, and then I'll if move Councilor back Bear the is table. uncomfortable with that, then I would ask that you use that microphone. That's fine. I'd be happy to. <clears throat> Ava Doyle, resident of the Weirs, Ward One. One thing I would like to mention is that any, any organization can apply for these. You don't have to. There's no guarantee that the WAC could get it. We have applied for this parking lot as late as December and January to be used in June. We've also applied for it as early as the week after Bike Week or the first, the first meeting, first parks meeting after Bike Week for this. Primarily, WAC gets it, I think, because nobody else really wants to ferry the 30 or 40 or 50 volunteers that it takes to run this lot. I would hazard a guess that there's probably in excess of 200 man hours, probably. Yeah. I do 144. Okay, Judy does 144 just on her own, just to run this lot. There's, it's volunteer, no monies. If the city were to run this lot at an average rate of, say, $10 an hour, at let's say let's say three hundred dollars you'd be looking at okay four to five thousand dollars just in wages and I can pretty much guarantee you because that lot's been run by WAC for 20 plus years we have it down to a science as to maximizing the number of people that go in there and where they can park and how the parking lot can be run and when it's muddy where not to put them and where certain trikes can go and where certain facilities can go I really don't think that any other group that would run it, I would think that they would be lucky to make twelve to 15000 It's because we've been doing it so long that we've done this. Um, the other thing I would have to ask, and Joey Driscoll, Joe, excuse me, Joe Driscoll's going to have to answer this question. How many, um, what would the expenses be that the city would have to pick up if WAC didn't pick them up, I know that we'd be they'd be paying for insurance on the sign, maintenance on the sign, ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of landscaping. Uh, easily, all the landscaping expenses, the planners, um, any Weir's Beach sign maintenance, which is an up in the air expense. Sometimes you know, sometimes it needs a lot, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, infrastructure that's marked on your uh, uh, on the profit and losses, the trash can project I spoke about, as well as the uh, seasonal banners that go up and down Lakeside Avenue, so um, and which we just Parking recently did, redid. 
uh, the various insurance. I, I mean, it, those. Yeah, we're talking twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year of stuff that, and you know, I really wasn't able to get to this. I mean, we pride ourselves in being able to come to you and say, trash cans, for example. I have seven thousand dollars. Can you guys match this, and we can help improve the area? We can't do that anymore. We're coming to you saying, I need $30,000, and I have nothing to throw into this. And we're an organization that is no longer economically viable. What does that do to our membership? It goes away. We're an organization that's been offered as, as a voice for the area in a variety of, of degrees. You, you have two counselors right here that have been affiliated with the organization. I've had the opportunity as, as a resident, and, and look, I, I don't own or operate a business down there. I grew up there. I love the area there. That's why I do this. I work right over there. Uh, I'm in the same parking lot as this building. And this affords the opportunity for people like myself, like business owners. Everybody. This is my stress on the nonprofit community group. It gives us the opportunity to give back to the city in a variety of ways. I'm on the master plan committee because of this thing. Uh, Ava, you served, served on the last go around. I, I, you know, what you're doing by not giving us this is having us here asking for the money instead of being able to do it on our own. And again, this is all public property mm -hmm. that we're talking about here. Now, one final point. If one of these other organizations were to get this lot, are you going to require them to join the Motorcycle Week Association too? Are they going to have to spend $5,000 to be on that board? Because if you're requiring one group to do it, in all fairness, if you can't be fair, be consistent, you're going to have to ask the other group to do it, too. Well, and I, and I would like to address that when it's, when it's my turn. That's the point I was going to address when I recognized, recognized you. But I have a question. I, for I just want to be clear. I'm, I'm not making that a condition. Okay, well, I just want people to understand that, you know, if you, apparently some people are, do feel like it's a condition. And, and if that's the case, you need to be, you need to be consistent. I mean, and I mean, I can tell you, I put in my hours down there. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. Um, I can also tell you that one of the big questions that, that the bikers ask when they come down there, they want to make sure this money isn't being raised by the city, is it? They don't want it to go to the city coffers. They go there and they park because they've parked there oh, year after year after year because they know the people that run the lot. They know we watch it. They know we do a good job. And, and they want to contribute to making the weirs look better because they're there every year. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Just to address the point that was raised by the two of you at this point, um, possible possibility that has not been raised. And I understand that you're not making this a condition of the application, but I would simply say by having a 45-minute discussion about this, it seems to have been a, a question. Nobody's asked me about spots or bathrooms or anything like that. Um, within the Motorcycle Week Association itself, in its own bylaws, it actually has a civic advisory group. We haven't been asked to join that. What that is is an entity of non-paying members of religious, fraternal, or nonprofit organizations. That's why I keep turning to the money end. You know, we haven't been asked, okay, you should be in this group. That would be great. You know, you can, benef you can help us with this. No, we're being asked for a dues, full dues-paying member on a board comprised of, at this point, I believe the city of Laconia, which is 50 plus million dollar organization. It's $5,000 is one one hundredth of a percent of your budget. City of Meredith, probably half that. Again, multi-million dollar entity. Um, we're the small community group that makes $25,000 a year. And we made a decision, what we all considered to be a reason, reasoned decision, after a presentation from the executive director of the organization we're talking about, regarding the financial the situation of that organization. And again, this is why I have been cautioning this idea of your board membership is what we're talking about in terms of promoting that event. I would say no. We, we are, our, our members devote thousands of dollars of their own to advertising. Everybody puts into that event. You know, we beautify the area hoping to bring these people back 
for Motorcycle Week, possibly for Fourth of July because they thought it was such a beautiful place. Possibly they bring their family up in August. Possibly they come back at Columbus Day. They may come back for Pumpkin Fest. Who knows? You know, because they enjoyed where they were staying and the activities to do. So, uh, I'm. I'm just in, again, in, in a situation where um, I do want to say that if, if we wish to discuss our concerns about the financial status of that organization, um, I have a member here who can speak to what has happened in the past in front of this council. Can I back up half a chapter before we get to that? And if, if we need I, to, we need to. But, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of want to, I want to divorce the, uh, the conversation we're having a little bit from my own perspective from the Motorcycle Week Association itself as opposed to Motorcycle Week the event mm -hmm. okay which in some minds are one and the same but not literally they're not one and the same no and and um, there's there's no question in my mind and I'm speaking only for myself uh, at this point in time certainly that that the rally itself is 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 uh, showing signs of trouble and i think we all recognize that okay and that it's not something anymore in my opinion that we can take for granted that we're always going to have it it's always going to be the cash cow that it's been for the people directly involved and the people indirectly involved including the city and that it's going to take a better and more targeted uh and probably larger financial marketing campaign in the future to market that event successfully than we have had in the past okay that's my opinion and so now as Councilor Lippman said we're looking at all kinds of avenues here one of which is a parking lot that's generating $25,000 a year in revenue that's city property um, that, that um, I, mean, I don't think anyone could blame us or anyone else from looking at it and saying let's take a look at that is that a source of possible revenue to put back into motorcycle week again not necessarily the motorcycle week association but into motorcycle week itself in trying to ensure its future okay successful future so what i'm saying is and, and what i'm hearing you say is that for a number of reasons including your tax status it might be questionable for you to as the kind of organization you are to belong to the Motorcycle Week Association at a, I mean, you did it for years at a $2,000 a year level. Maybe five is too much and raises questions. I won't argue that point with you. Maybe you have objections to the way the Motorcycle Week Association spends its money on marketing. Maybe you have objections to how they've spent money in the past or what the finances are. I'm not going to argue those points with you at all. I'm simply saying that from my standpoint, we have reached the point where in my opinion we can't just give up twenty five thousand dollars of revenue to somebody you or whoever it is without plowing some of that money back into motorcycle week itself to the marketing and promotion of motorcycle week and what you're saying is what i'm hearing you say is that it's inappropriate for your organization to do that i would Whether disagree with that okay so we can argue that point but or, or we can we can we can get back to that point I mean, there's plenty of avenues available to your organization to market Motorcycle Week outside of the Motorcycle Week Association. You could apply for direct matching funds yourself to the front to the uh, the state's uh, joint promotion pro uh, program, for example. Uh, you'd be perfectly qualified to do that and would double the funds that, that you're putting into it to advertise. But you may not want to do that, and I'm not. I don't think we should make that a condition of your approval what I am saying though is that the simplest solution to this nor am I arguing that the Weir's Action Committee Councilor Bear has stated her position on this and I'm not necessarily arguing in any way shape or form that your organization shouldn't benefit from this parking lot but it seems to me that the common sense solution to this is simply to say you don't get to keep all the money from dollar one that the city will charge rent on the lot if you will at some amount I would say minimally five thousand dollars be up to the will of the council as to what that would be in other words the city you pay a fee for usage of the city property and you keep you pay us the fee for rent and then you keep everything else I 
what's the precedent on doing something like that? What are other organizations have you required to do that? Right. So if I could, Mayor. I'm sorry, Council Rubin. You know, in terms of not trying to make this a two-hour meeting on this one issue, um, you know, this is I'd suggest sort of a way out of this for the moment is we have some real legitimate financial concerns about Motorcycle Week from a budgetary standpoint. We have legitimate concerns about the staying power of the event to generate um, the activity that's generated in the past. <coughs> we need your help. Um, to do something different than what we've been doing 20 years consecutively because everything that we're doing 20 years consecutively in the event is leading to its <coughs> some dis destabilization here so what I'd suggest we uh, to move this forward I'd suggest that we accept the recommendation of the um, Parks and Recreation <laughs> Committee with respect to this particular year and I think we need to work with you over the next year and coming up with something else because at this point there's nobody else applying for the the parking lot um, but you know I, I do think that we all need to work together differently if we want to sustain this event and I would just li I'd like to give some background information Charlie came to me just after bike week he told me that they needed three thousand dollars more from us yeah. so we took it to the committee we offered him three they didn't even talk about it they showed us the door I think you've been told that sitting there on the couch I asked I'm Charlie, sorry what was that again motorcycle we did not take our num uh, sum of money three thousand dollars and vote on it it was not voted on according to Robert Ames what was not voted on three thousand dollar offer we paid two thousand he wanted five thousand we voted down the five thousand we offered three and it was not presented to the board yes it was it was discussed I was there yeah. And what did they? What, they voted it down. They, the, the the board agreed that that, that, that everyone was in the organization needed to play it. Pay okay, the so same that was it. our that was our fee that we were contributing to the rally. Sitting on the couch talking to Charlie, I said, Charlie, the magazine. You have all these ads. How did? What was the revenue on the magazines? And he said, Well, Jägermeister didn't pay, but you printed their ad, and then this didn't pay, and this didn't pay. Charlie, that's one of the problems you're you're giving them free advertising with no receivables coming in that's the first one I said let me tell you the hundred year commencement of uh, or the anniversary of bike week is coming up in eight years why don't we have a state license plate commemorative with a seal and I said there's over 79,000 motorcycles registered in the state of New Hampshire according to USA Today 79,000 so the state how it works is that and I did a whole study on it and gave it to a rep down in Concord the state gets the first part and then motorcycle week or the city would get above that that's six hundred thousand dollars sitting right there for bike week we are not a line item budget of the city we are not in your budget not one dollar goes to flowers or the benches or the banners or the flags that's what we stand out there for five dollars a bike asking us to pay five thousand dollars or three thousand more is six hundred bikes that's hundred and fifty parking spaces I'm the one who's standing there I had to hire five people this year because I'm the only one there my daughter flew in from Phoenix she collected the money it's a cash business we had a lot of skimming in previous years that doesn't happen anymore it's a cash business we're doing it to benefit you so we don't have to come and say we need thirty thousand dollars as a budget line you're not going to give us ten thousand in flowers you're not going to give us seven thousand in irrigation you're not going to give us seven thousand in trash cans we don't have the money this year so twenty years ago you told whack or excuse me the Weir's community if you want money go out and earn it and Charlie threatened me on the couch he says Judy I'm the one who got you that parking lot I said Charlie you threatening me and here we are today talking about a five thousand dollar fee for a nonprofit people like us we were having a heck of a time parking bikes last year and the minute we put on nonprofit on top of our entrance sign at the park they flowed in 55 at a time poor Miss Barbara Dick she was going crazy that's what we do and we do it for you we do it for the taxpayer 
And if you want to make the Weirs a $30,000 budget, please take the parking lot. I'm tired. I was rushed to the hospital with anaphylactic shock last year. I was so burnt, medication just put me on my tail. I'm tired. And I'm your volunteer. If you take the parking lot, you've got the budget line item. 30000 please. Just to respond to some let's, of... Oh. Let's let Councilor Bullock here first. Lakeport Community Association. We park cars to motorcycles. So what are we going to have to pay? It's the same thing. If we have to do that, we're not going to be able to do it because we can't afford it. We're trying to keep raise money to fix that building and make it a, uh, a nice building to look at. Everybody that does this on a motorcycle bike <coughs> is going to have to do the same thing. I, I just can't understand this. It's, it's, uh, I know what they're going through because I'm there every single day parking cars in Lakeport and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of... And what's your gross income from that? <laughs> Last year I think we made uh, five, $500. $500. How many more like us? I mean, if they do it, if you force them to do it, we're going to have to do the same thing. Any other comments before we come back to Councilman Councilor Bounds? I just want to be sure that we're all hearing the discussion here, because it's no nobody, or at least I'm not hearing anything derogatory or uh, about the Weir's Action Committee, what it is you do, what you devote your money to, the amount of time you spend. Um, putting back into the community all that you do. I love what this committee does and how you do it. Uh, I want to be sure we understand the sense of what this discussion is and what the times are, because the times have changed. Motorcycle Week is not the same revenue-generating event that it was five years ago or ten years ago. It's changing, and we have to recognize uh, that change with respect to our fiscal responsibilities. Um, the sensible approach that Councilor Lippman suggests, and that is, you know, radically changing the rules now, which is kind of radical because this is your real source of income. Without it, there is no Weir's Action Committee. Correct. I think we all understand that, okay? Radically changing the rules now might be a mistake, but the discussion has got to go on in terms of what we do with the income or the potential income from these lots and from all other sources of revenue for Motorcycle Weekends. The discussion has got to go on in terms of uh, the Laconia Mo Motorcycle Week Association and how we're going to address that. I don't think anybody here wants to see that organization fail. So, you know, what I'm encouraging here is a dialogue that continues beyond, you know, they asked for $3,000, who knows whether it was voted on or not, and somebody was threatened and somebody was not threatened. That's not a dialogue. What I, what I want to see is a dialogue between the Weir's Action Committee, the Laconia Motorcycle Week Association, the city, uh, that addresses these ongoing issues. I do not want the Weir's Action Committee to go out of business this year or in 2016. I'm, I don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see this um, application denied, but I do want to know that everybody's going to come to the table and engage in the discussion about what the city is and what the various organizations are going to do in the long term to make Motorcycle Week an event that's profitable, fun and something that attracts thousands and thousands of people from all over the country on an ongoing yearly basis. Thank you. In response to sort of the, those themes that have been coming across, uh, 
that's why I've said throughout this that I, you know, are we talking about participation in a specific organization that we are being now told to pay, or are we talking about an effort in order to enhance the event as a whole? Now, what I'm hearing too, and again, this is a this is far afield from wh where we thought we were coming into here. I don't know why you say that. I, I don't know why you say that because that was on the agenda from the very first meeting that I didn't attend to. So this is, it's been in the p papers. This is clearly on the agenda. It clearly something that we were talking about. So I don't know why you're surprised. Uh, because I got a letter from the city manager's office that says we have no reason to show up. We're recurring. Uh, thing and there shouldn't be any questions and we're all set to go. What day, what's the date of that letter? August 24th. Okay. This was after my conversation with the city manager about providing you with uh, that information? Was, that was before last meeting? I, I wasn't here at the last meeting, okay. so I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know. All right, you're surprised. I'll take you a good face. <laughs> but no, I'm I, not surprised. I, I, I'm saying it from the standpoint of regarding the motorcycle week association because it's not a, not an element of the of the uh they, the they're part of the discussion no. they, they've got to be part of the discussion don't you understand that i, I understand that they're being made a part right. of the discussion right. but they're not a city department I, mr driscoll the third would like to address us joe driscoll 12 maple street so forth and now to a person the laconia motorcycle week association do you all consider it to be an efficient well-run, wonderful organization that we should be putting all of our efforts behind? Is that what you're saying? Nobody you're saying they, they spend their money, their money well? Where are their statements to go along with this? Nobody said uh, that. The last statement I heard was right in this room, you were all here, was that they were, and this is before, and I haven't heard they've done better, they were $65,000 short on their operational budget for the upcoming year, and probably about a quarter million dollars in uh, credit card and other debt. And I stood here, I sat here in this room, and I listened to a city councilor, who will remain unnameless, suggest that, gee, in instances like this, doesn't the board just take the debt and divide it amongst themselves? Which would leave the Weir, Little Weir's Action Committee. At that time, we had the billionaire owner of the uh, racetrack. We have the multimillionaire owners of Laconia. Uh, we got the city. Everybody else on that board could pay that debt with a check, except for us. So I'm sitting here listening to that. You sat here and you turned down that group a substantial amount of money and did the right thing in doing so. <coughs> and then sealed your minutes so nobody would know what you did. That's what happened. Now you're saying that we're going to balance this budget? We're the key to this? A little community group? You guys should be ashamed of yourselves even considering this. My God, what are you saying to every community group in this city? saying they're no good, they're saying, all right, you're going to make a little money, we're kicking you out and we're putting our friends in because our friends are more important than us. This crony government crap has got to stop. The Laconia Motorcycle Week Association ought to go under. It is under and everything, anything but officially. Scared the daylights out of me every time I came from a meeting there. The worst run organization I've ever seen in my life. Go to a meeting. Oh, well, geez, the bylaws say this, uh, motion to suspend, uh, suspend this, suspend that. Uh, holy crap, the civic advisory group. There it is, composition. There shall be established by the council a civic advisory group consisting of one representative from each civic, fraternal, religious, cultural, or charitable organization headquartered in Belknap County, New Hampshire, in the town of Loudoun, New Hampshire, that desires to participate in said advisory group. I pointed to that, to the president of that organization, as vice president, said, hey, maybe we can do something with this. She said, we don't want those people around here. Okay, that's who you're dealing with there. My goodness, uh, what, what we sat through, the, uh, the financial reports, okay, you've seen them, improperly prepared. There were things that uh, the representative from the racetrack said he'd go to jail over. In that is not true today anymore. 
Well, I mean, Councilor Boldick and I go to all and, the and, meetings. And, and yet it's the Weir's Council. Action Committee that's called on the carpet. I don't get it. We raise money for years for this. Uh, Linda, do, do you think I pocket any of that? Do you not benefit from the motorcycle event? Do I not pay a tremendous amount for it? How do you know what I pay, Brenda? Are you coming? Are you guys going to come to my next uh, business meeting and tell me how to spend my advertising dollars? Is that where the, is that where this is going? Are we going to do that to private business owners next? What, Joe, what if are you guys everybody doing? sitting on the board withdrew because you withdrew, well, why did the others withdraw, no, Brenda? All, do you know? If do you know? Else does what happened? Do you know why the Chamber of Commerce left? Why Gunstock left? Why the racetrack left? Why uh, Laconia Harley Davidson left? Anybody care to go on record for that? I care to go on record that I think this is off off the point, Joe. Right. Um, I think that and it's the issue personal, the too. issue the issue here is that we have a non-sustainable event that we're raising that issue. And you're no putting one, all your eggs no in one, the same basket no you have for 20 years in that council. Finish, please. No one asked you to make a specific donation. Just okay. And I explicitly said that. And I, yeah. You know, and I'm trying, made I'm trying to help you guys for the long run. And if you don't want the help, that's fine. But I'm, tonight, I'm prepared to move this along, which I think we should do. But I think we both heard each other from a, from a number of different standpoints that the status quo needs to change for all of us to make this event last. And whether it's through the motorcycle week or through other means, we got to work together differently. And you know, getting on each other's case and putting each other down isn't the route to make this thing successful. Uh, it, here's where I come from on that, and I 100% uh, would it would absolutely welcome any of the councilors, the mayor, to reach out to me. I am more than happy to uh, meet with you as a group or individually about what we are as an organization. Because frankly, I feel that a lot of the discussion kind of is born from not a complete understanding of what we are as a group and, and what we do. So um, I would welcome those opportunities. Uh, you know. We are a stakeholder in the area, so we should discuss. But that being said, we have our concerns. We took it to our, our committee. They voted. I am here to represent them in that capacity and what those votes and concerns and were. I, and I think what you're hearing tonight around the council here is that certainly not unanimously, but I think you're hearing that if we're having this exact same discussion a year from now, that it's not going to be good. Well, well I, I understand, but I, I, I again, I'm, I'm coming and saying I am more than willing to have a conversation about all these things, and I am. But nobody here asked me to have that conversation before. Well, you and I have had that conversation. We had that conversation before last year's application. We had that conversation, yes, a year ago. Right, or well. So, you know, and I'm more than willing to discuss a lot of things with you as a group. Uh, we feel that we are a good representative of the area. Councilor Hamill. Just been kind of sitting back and listening here, so um, I, I just want to weigh in on something and it'll be very brief. Um, I, I think the council as a whole um, probably needs to get a grasp on Bike Week as a whole. Um, things are changing. I think the city, pro I mean, it's involved, but I think the decision needs to be made at some point here, probably within a year or so or sooner, is whether the city wants to completely take over Bike Week and, and, and run it. Um, I, I think we're coming to that point uh, if it's going to succeed. Um, I, I do think uh, that where you benefit so much from Bike Week, um, and it is a lot of hard work. There's no doubt about it. You know, I've helped Armand Park cars. I go see you guys and uh, Don up at uh, the community center, and it's just a tremendous amount of hours and little volunteers to do it. And with the list of stuff you do, it's commendable. Okay, but I, I think the council needs to, to step back and look at this whole event and see where we want to go with it as a council and as a city. Whether we're going to, we had this discussion once with the Bike Week organization. Well, do you own Bike Week? Because th there was something that happened. And they said, no, we don't own it. And then we asked, well, does the city own it? No, the city doesn't own it. So 
we got to decide who's going to own this and, and run it. So that's my comment. Um, I agree with Henry. Um, I, I think uh, just move the vote on for this year. And uh, I think probably during the year we should have some kind of discussion uh, about Bike Week as a whole. Um, and, I would encourage that conversation okay. right next door. Okay, anything else before we get a motion on the floor here? All right, I hear a uh, motion from from uh, Councilor Libman to re approve the request for the Weir's Action Committee to use Endicott War Park Weir's Beach parking lot to park motorcycles during the 2016 rally from June 3rd to June 19th from 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. Is there a second? Second by Councilor Bullock. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise a hand. Okay. Four votes in the affirmative against. One vote against. The vote is four to one, and the motion carries, and the request is approved for 2016. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. your time. Thank you. Thank you for all for coming tonight on this issue. <laughs> oh, welcome, Councilor Doyle, back to the table. <coughs> okay, interviews. We have one interview tonight. Richard Christopher. Is Mr. Christopher <coughs> here? <coughs> if you could come to one of the microphones, sir. Mr. Christopher is seeking appointment as a full member of the Conservation Commission uh, to fill the remaining term of, of Hillary May, who resigned and her <coughs> term expires at the end of August 2017, so a little under two years. Mr. Christopher, for the record, would you identify yourself and where you live, please, and tell us why you'd like to serve? Uh, Richard Christopher, uh, live at 38 Kensington Drive, Laconia. And uh, why I'd like to serve is uh, primary. I'd like to give back to the city uh, whatever I can. I've been a resident uh, of the city since I was 10 years old, which is a long time now. Um, I'm involved with uh, various other organizations that uh, contribute to the city, uh, community emergency response team in particular. Uh, we work with fire and police. I've always uh, been interested in uh, conservation issues. And uh, I found that there was an opening on the board, or the commission rather, and I applied. I think I can uh, be a valuable member. I have. Uh, an engineering background, particularly in construction, and uh, I've worked with a lot of the city developers over the years. I know procedures, and I know bad procedures as well. And so uh, I think I can do a good job on, on the commission. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Christopher? Just want to thank him for coming forward. We all do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the procedure on this is, according to council rule, we will vote on this nomination at our next meeting at the end of the month, and it is not necessary for you to be here for that. You're welcome to come if you like. That's fine. I've been attending the uh, commission meetings and uh, seeing what's going on there, so I'm, in, I'm informed as to what's happening. Okay, very good. Thank, Thank you, you for your time, sir. Okay, next up is citizen comments for matters not on tonight's agenda. This is the place, an appropriate time for anyone who is in the audience tonight who would like to address the council on any matter that is nowhere on tonight's agenda. Is there anyone who has that <coughs> need or desire tonight? Nope. Okay, we'll move on. <coughs> I got those out of order, didn't I? Yeah. Apologize. Okay. You can do that. You can do that. <laughs> Okay. Public hearing. This is an informal public hearing tonight uh, having to do with chapters 167 of the city ordinance dealing with, uh, and chapter 161 dealing with uh, the so-called noise part of the city ordinance and also dealing with the outdoor sound equipment and loudspeaker portion. Uh, I think most of you know what happened at our last meeting, but I'll refresh everyone informally. Um, there were some 
amendments to those two ordinances that came before the council for a first reading at our last meeting and the council decided not to pass that uh, those changes on first reading and schedule an official public hearing which usually happens as the first order of business because it requires two readings to pass the ordinance instead the council decided that it wanted to hold an informal public hearing tonight on this issue so at this point in time uh, informally I would invite anyone to come forward and address the council on the proposed changes to either chapter 161 or chapter 167 of the city ordinance and please identify yourself and uh, uh, for the record and uh, please be respectful and hold your comments to five minutes or less and if we have time for everyone to speak uh, we'll give you a second shot at it if you like at the end I'm Walt Watson I live at 41 Van Dyke Drive Baconia New Hampshire I just I don't know whether I'm out of order or not not uh, yet you're not all right um, there are three houses on Van Dyke Drive and they abut 11 Mechanic Street uh, 11 Mechanic Street is owned by Susan Torcott and it is being excavated and used with her permission by Kyle Dunn and over the past years that they have owned that property they have been excavating it they have been pre pre uh, preparing it they have used the uh, earth in that lot uh, to process it and to, and to bring it out to other places um, so we have been hearing noise from seven o'clock in the morning till late at night eight o'clock at night Monday through Sunday um, so in, in that vogue now the city has told them as far as I know that uh, they have to build a house there that was the purpose of them buying the property first okay uh, so I would like to put uh, one Sunday he was over there Kyle Dunn uh, moving rocks around after 6 p.m. on a Sunday night you know it's a resident area I would like to have some privacy and some quiet so with all that background I would like to propose in the noise order ordinance this part of it for construction sites excavation sites and landscaping sites plus sites that contain construction excavation and landscaping landscaping equipment and materials there is no noise before 7.30 a.m. and after 6 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays, and before 8 a.m. and after 5 p.m. on Sundays because of our situation. And could you leave that wording with the clerk, please? I have to rewrite it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'll give it to you. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Do you want, Thank you. Do you want me to make a copy of it? Could you just? I made a mistake. <laughs> no, I told you. Can you just tell me the times that you were asking <coughs> for the excavation sites from Monday through Saturday? The time. No noise. Before 7:30 7. 7. a.m. and after 6 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays. And before 8 a.m. and after 5 p.m. on Sundays. Thank you. You're welcome. Who else would like to weigh in on this issue? Mr. Richards. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everybody involved in this uh, on the council uh, because it's a <clears throat> A tough proposition I understand that I've as I said before I've worked looked at it for years um, uh, after uh, reviewing what has been proposed um, I feel that uh, uh, the words that were given to me that uh, what we were after was a compromise between business and, and the people that live there and so on and so forth um, I feel with the uh, indoor uh, adjustment to the hours of uh, sound of music or whatever you want to call it um, 
that we probably uh, giving the planning board some some leeway <coughs> in any new construction that's meant for that kind of entertainment having some leeway in, in the uh, requirement of soundproofing and so on um, and uh, uh, getting uh, and restraining the people that that do do it to be in, in a reasonable configuration I don't see any reason why uh, kind of reluctantly, but uh, but in a in a way to uh, compromise, to uh, agree with that that extension that the committee seems to have come up with, in the times of indoor um, sound. Uh, as to the outdoor speakers, uh, I don't think so. Um, uh, I would not extend the time. Um, I know there are all kinds of ideas on how to control this or how to restrict it. But when somebody puts loudspeakers out in their yard or in their outdoor area that they intend to entertain in, they put the speakers there to make noise. And they do make noise. And uh, as much as you'd like to be able to draw a line someplace and say, you know, if I can hear it past 50 feet or 100 feet or something, then it's too much, uh, that's not realistic. Um, it just isn't going to stop in 50 feet or 100 feet or whatever it goes on. It goes across the bay. It goes uh, into people's homes. Um, and the only restriction that I can imagine that you can put on outdoor speakers and outdoor noise making equipment is time. And uh, the times that, are, that were on the uh, regulations, I think were sufficient. And I don't think the door should be opened um, to allow people to apply to have extended times um, because uh, that opens the door to these people coming on a regular basis and getting several extended time periods a year, uh, which, which you might as well do away with the regulation and let them do what they want to do. Um, uh, however, uh, th they should be allowed to come before, uh, I guess it would be the licensing board, um, and and get uh, on occasion, special occasion permission. You know, with Motorcycle Week, and I don't want to uh, make this a lengthy discussion, we certainly had a lengthy discussion preceding this, which was all justified, by the way. Um, but uh, uh, we can't uh, control that. And um, my uh, train of thought here was that uh, uh, I think the way the regulations were written before on the outdoor, on the outdoor speakers and music, um, was uh, controllable within reason and I don't see any reason and that would be the compromise that could you know if we're going to compromise for business and give them uh, uh, some uh, leeway then we have to also compromise a little bit to the homeowners and the condo owners and the people that live down there that want some quality of life um, on a regular basis so uh, I, I do think after discussions, I'm sure there's others that want to make discussions here, and after discussions of the, of the group that's considering this for the council, that uh, they can find some compromise language to make this thing work. So I guess that's it. <coughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Ernie Baldick, 86 Lafayette Street, uh, Laconia. I'm really afraid of what is going to happen if you open this Pandora box. I have property at Hampton Beach, and it, you, uh, the minute I say Hampton Beach, you probably say, well, it has nothing to do with Laconia, but it does. I have property down there, and I'm 200 feet away from a pub. Inside music, it's all been taken care of according to the officials in the, in the uh, town of Hampton, that everything is okay, it's all been soundproof, but God Almighty, I cannot put my head on a pillow in my, any of my property without hearing that loud bass drum. And it, you, it just boom, boom, boom all night long. They change the hours from 11 to 7 to midnight to whatever. Then they changed it to 1 o'clock in the morning. 
And now the state says that you can have your pubs open until 2 o'clock in the morning. And what happens then? Those that have been drinking all night at these pubs come out at 1 o'clock and go to the 2 o'clock because they can drink till 2 o'clock there. When they're doing that, they're going from one place to another, yelling, screaming, and everything. And this is 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And, by the, and, and when, the, when the 2 o'clock gets out, they have their hollering and screaming. I'm afraid that's what's going to happen here because here in Laconia, that hasn't happened, but there it has. We started 11 to 7, everything, noise, and even people who uh, uh, have construction sites. They can't start till 7 in the morning, 11 to 7, and that worked out beautifully. I have lost tenants who will never come back in the middle of the night, come and wake me up and say, give me my...